Hey, welcome to Mullen Stock. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never missed any of our uploads. And also remember that this is not a financial advice video. Today, I want to give you a summary of some data points about Mullen and what the shorts have been up to, along with everything else you need to know. Let's get straight to the point. So Mullen closed with a 3.6% decline. It was quite a terrible day, repeatedly witnessing the stock going down the drain. And when the market opened, every stock rallied together in response to strong GDP numbers. We were expecting 4.9, but it came in at 5.2. And this is on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. However, Mullen has different intentions. It's getting very tricky. And as of today, it hit a new 52-week low, an all-time low at 15.3 cents, with 59.57 million shares traded, averaging 50.93 million. There was no confirmation from Mark Basile. No confirmation of deliveries. It's stuck in limbo. And when it comes to after hours, there was some strange price action, similar to what happened yesterday. It went up by about 1.2%. Maybe RBC or someone was using their trade desk, as I mentioned. It seems like they came back, just like yesterday. And there were different transactions. So instead of a code 795, there was 1 million, then another million, another million, and 718,000. Why they are buying, no one knows and whether it's RBC or someone using their trade desk. But still, why they are buying, no one really knows. It's creating a lot of disorderly things in after hours, like yesterday and today as well. Well, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think this is necessary? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? If I have to guess, especially if you connect it with available shares through shorts, I can say whoever is buying is probably doing it for the purpose of lending. I'll explain a bit more. When I walk onto the stage in shorts, there's one thing I want to share exclusively with you. So at the upcoming shareholder meeting on December 15th, there are two proposed items on the agenda. The first one is a reverse stock split, where the ratio could range from 1 to 2 to as high as 1 to 100. The second is for adjournment. If Mullen doesn't get the outcome they desire for the first proposal, they can adjourn the meeting. However, there's a condition. Time is limited. As I've shown you before, the deadline is January 22nd. That's the last day for Mullen to stay above $1 for 20 consecutive trading days. The Nasdaq has set this deadline. Subtracting 20 days from that date means Mullen needs to stay above $1 for at least 20 consecutive days by December 21st. So let's say on the 27th, the stock drops below $1 and stays there. This means everything is futile. The 20 consecutive trading days must happen again. But the shareholder meeting is on the 15th. Let's assume the entire reverse stock split is approved, and it doesn't turn out the way Mullen wants. They can adjourn the meeting because the second proposal is for adjournment, and let's assume it passes. Then Mullen can use the adjournment. But they have to do it within these five days. I believe it's five days. But whatever it is, whether it's five or ten days, it won't work, as you can see there. So essentially this is do or die. So the upcoming shareholder meeting, whatever the outcome of the reverse stock split, whether it's a yes or no, that will be the final outcome. Because technically, if this is a five-day notice, which I understand will be there, this is when they can actually adjourn the meeting. And technically, this is a very short notice. Mullen has to stay above $1 by that date. So in the end, all of this won't work. The upcoming shareholder meeting on the 15th for Mullen is significant. If you haven't voted yet, I strongly suggest you do. As I mentioned, there's a small caveat. If a retail investor doesn't vote, your broker or bank can vote on your behalf, and it will likely go in favor of the board. Yes, on both proposals, number one and number two. Now, I just wanted to make that clear, but let's also talk about options. Today, there was a slightly higher dollar value in options. 23,000 calls were purchased compared to 8,000 puts. As I mentioned, there's a little change, a bit more positivity. Despite the 52-week and all-time lows, there was some optimism in the options today, especially around Friday with a close above $0.50. Purchases were made at the $0.50 strike price, totaling 1000 I don't know, maybe some expected news is coming, perhaps related to the upcoming lawsuit, as tomorrow. The first is the actual deadline for the new or amended complaint for Mullen. People might be excited, I don't know. Share your thoughts on this. Additionally, there are some call options in January related to NASDAQ compliance. So, there's hope that Mullen will go above $1, get the NASDAQ rubber stamp, and everyone will be happy. 
This optimism is based on many wanting to stay positive despite the ongoing sell-off. Share your opinion on this. I notice some saying that more warrants are being exercised, which is a very realistic possibility. We'll have to wait for the upcoming earnings on December 29th to find out the current warrant situation. However, even in this scenario, it will only give us a viewpoint as of September 30th, 2023. So, this won't be entirely current as many investors would like. But let's talk about shorts for a moment. So as of today, about 347,000 shares have been added to shorts, which is 13.59% of the free float. In total, 52.75 million shares have been shorted. The cost to borrow is a bit higher compared to yesterday, at 197.15%. According to Interactive Brokers, about 650,000 shares are available for shorting. And as I signaled earlier, I think it might be a bit early to discuss this. But those who are buying through RBC or their trade desk might just be lending it because you can make a good amount based on it, similar to what BlackRock has done. Again and again, they have lent their shares and received a good premium for it. And it's a win-win for them. So when it comes to RBC or someone else, they might be doing the same because if you look, since RBC started buying, it was briefly at even no shares available, only 10,000, then it quickly increased. So who knows, there might be some correlation, or maybe not. What are your thoughts on Mullen operations remaining silent? And what are your thoughts on Mark Basil progressive matters? Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about Mullen stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.